Nardis back at it, this time showing you how to take those dirty palettes from trashy to classy in this Pottery Barn inspired reclaimed palette art DIY. So for this palette project, we're gonna need palette wood. There's a couple of ways you can go about getting these. You can look around near warehouses or industrial areas. The owners of those are usually happy to give them away. Um, you can also look on Craigslist. Craigslist, you can find them there. Um, for free, occasionally you will see them there for sale as well. If you're in a hurry and just want to get it done, you don't want to deal with any of the headache of pulling these apart, you can always go to your local hardware store, big box hardware store, and pick up pre-cut pieces that are already done and ready to go. For this project, however, we are using real pallet wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to pull these apart, clean them up, and get them ready for your project. So before we begin prying these apart, you're going to want to wear some type of hand protection to protect your hands, um, something to protect your eyes from flying debris. We're going to go ahead and use this hammer and we're going to use this crowbar to start prying these pallets off of this, uh, off this pallet board over here. So let's go ahead and slip this in. Next thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and take these nails out and let's come in a little closer and see how to do that. done you should be left with a pile like this and a whole lot of nails like this so we've gone ahead and have our pallets all pulled apart we went and removed all the nails from the pallets now we can go ahead and start making our cuts and actually begin putting our project together however this pallet was a little too rough for my liking we're gonna go ahead and run this through the planer to go ahead and smooth it out a little if you don't have access to a cleaner, don't worry about it. You can still move forward with the project and I'll show you how at the end to go ahead and sand it all down once you're done and you'll get an equally smooth finish. So once you're done running them through the planer, you should have some nice and smooth planks like this. And now we can go ahead and take them over to our table saw and start ripping them down. So right here, all I'm doing is taking um, the planks and ripping them down at varying widths uh, in order to give it a more organic look because I don't want all the planks to be the same because it look kind of boring. So let's go ahead and get that done. And there we go, our lineup. So we get those ready. Now we head on over to the miter saw, adjust to 45 degrees. And on all the planks, 45 degree cuts on the corner. And I try to keep all the planks really long because you're gonna wanna have overhang from whatever you're affixing it to. So as you can see here, I'm affixing it to, this is a 3 8 inch uh, plywood that I had left over from a previous project. I believe I had this one at 23 by 60 or something around there. Uh, 26 by 60 I think it was. And what I'm doing right here is I'm drawing a vertical and uh, uh, horizontal lines because I'm doing like an offset pattern. Now that I've got that in there you could start to uh, do a mock-up of the pattern. So go ahead and follow your pattern that you, you did on there, the lines that you drew, and just 
don't affix anything yet because if there's any errors or any miscalculations right here's the the point where you can catch it you don't want to be halfway through it and then uh, have to fix it so go ahead and take your time and make sure it looks good before you start sticking okay, anything yeah. in so once you've gone ahead and got your mock-up looking good and you're happy with it go ahead and pull off section by section suit in an orderly way and go ahead and start getting your glue and your brad nails ready because we're going to start laying everything in right now so you're going to go and glue and brad nail it all in to um your backing here we're finishing up on the last piece and as you see we left plenty of overhang on everything so that way we could chop it all off and look really nice and clean so right here this is what you should be left with in and of itself looks like a piece of art but we're gonna go ahead and add a frame so we're gonna chop off the excess right up to there um, to the border and you can use a hand saw, a jigsaw, or I'm going to use my circular saw. So I grabbed a piece of wood to use it as a guide. And here I come with the circular saw. And just going to chop off the excess pieces I don't want. And there you go. It looks very clean. Um, now, if you didn't have a plane earlier, here I'm sanding it anyways, but if you didn't have a plane earlier, this is where you'd come in and get that sanding in to give your, your rough wood a smoother finish. So here I'm just getting everything smoothed out because I like everything to uh, not have any burrs or anything in it that'll hurt someone, you know, family member or client or anything like that. Now, time for staining. So for the staining, I went with a golden pecan, uh, walnut, sun bleached, and uh, aqua kind of teal color, vintage aqua is what it says. Uh, you can pause it and check it out if you'd like. So normally when I start applying uh, any type of stain, I work from light to dark. Uh, that's what I'm doing here. But you will kind of see me mix it up a little bit and there you see me dropping in a little bit of the dark walnut and that's because we're mixing in different colors here. So uh, I'm just going through and then once I'm all done with the colors, uh, let it thoroughly dry, thoroughly dry. Don't, don't start sanding it when it's wet or when it's still moist. So when it's thoroughly dry, go ahead and sand it down. So I'm doing that to kind of give it a more uh, aged look so it doesn't look new. I want it to look um, weathered and antiqued and uh, with a patina on it. So once I got that all done, I'll go ahead and wipe down all the dust just to kind of get a good idea of how the color looks. There you go. So it looks Looks, and then sit back and admire it. Wow, looks nice, huh? So you get to admire it for a little bit. And then what do we got to do? Oh, yeah, we got to go make a frame. Oh, here we go. Um, this is not the frame yet. This is the backing. We're doing this to add a little bit of um, width to the, to the frame or to the panel. So um, you're going to see the frame that I'm going to make for it's really simple but yet really elegant looking. And this is just going to make it fix to the frame better and be sturdier. And when it sits on the wall, sit flush on the wall. That's what also this helps for. So all I'm doing here is we're doing 45 degree cuts on the corners. So I'm using my square to mark it off. And you'll see right now exactly what I'm doing. <clears throat> fiddling with this apparently so oh, don't be shy cut it cut it there and check it check it nice looking good now so you see what I'm doing there rinse recycle and repeat do that for all four sides that's what we're doing here. So we'll just go through this quickly, um, lining up the sides, using your square, and really it's just important that you that you make precise cuts in order for it to look nice. So 
and go back and do that for the rest of these again and again now we're gonna check the width right here we're almost at one and a half right there one and a half and I'm using some one by two it's a little bit more a little bit less a little bit more than an inch and a half thick so that gives me the recessed look that I want and if I didn't have that I would go ahead and just um, get some wood and cut it down to the width I want for how, how I want it recessed into the frame so as you can see now we're back on the miter doing the frame part and if you'll look at the miter saw right here you see that I got it I've got it laying down on the bevel cut so all the way down 45 degrees on the bevel cut and that's to do the cuts for the frame that's going to go around so again i'm using some one by two and we're doing this like the like we do everything else a mock-up so we just want to make sure everything fits together properly a uh, little tip here as you see me fitting them on with the clamps uh, what you can do too is somewhere discreetly is number each one, you know, one, two, three, four, or, um, you know, on the frame as well. So that way you can match up each of the sides perfectly after you're done. Uh, we're going to do some sanding and some staining here in a little bit. So all we're doing is checking it, making sure that everything fits well. And once we see that everything f looks good and fits well, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and pull it back apart. And now we're going to get our palette off of there and start laying down our frame edges because we're gonna go ahead and get these ready for stain and the way we're going to do that is I'm going to sand them nice and smooth. Um, sanding it makes it A nice and smooth and then B it also opens up the the pores on the wood I guess if you want to call it pores or the wood it opens up the wood to receive the stain better so um, it'll it'll take in the stain and look a lot cleaner because on this one I I want the the wood grain to show through so here we are staining. I'm using a walnut color stain, so like a very dark one. And a little trick that I do is um, start off with a little and just rub it into the wood really well. You don't want gobs of it because you're going to want it to be able to dry kind of quickly and then you're going to want to see the wood grain too. So there you go. You see that all nice and stained with the wood grain showing. And then again, mock it up make sure everything looks good and now we will go through with the brad nailer and some glue and again 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 yeah it's never ending with the, the brad nailer and just making this look right and perfect so just yeah keep on going here we go i think this is the last part it is right last corner let's see how that looks get that and there we go just kidding we still got more <laughs> all right we're all done with that so now we're gonna need to hang this so you went to the hardware store and got some hooks either from the hardware store or the art store to hold up your frame they come in different weights for pounds so pick accordingly Right here, I'm doing this about 12 inches from the top of my frame because I want it, the, the tie to be hanging up a little bit higher. So, it's like everything else, you kind of get it mocked up. So you got one side ready, move on over to the next one, mark off your same way, and go ahead and uh, get that in there get your wire so we're gonna use to hang it and right now I'm just measuring it because I'm finding the center of where the frame is and I'm gonna here's a real nice tip I'm gonna put a screw in there because that's where you're gonna pull the frame wire really tight when you 
join it on the other side of the the other hook on the other end and the reason for that is that's exactly where it's going to hang on a wall so for this one it makes it perfect where it sits flush against the wall it looks like it's just floating and you could just hold it up with one nice screw in a and you, you, of course, you want to do that in one of the studs in a wall, not just regular drywall. <laughs> so there I am pulling it tight, and I just use the wire, <clears throat> and I tie it how generally I see all frames done, which is like kind of a little loop around, and then it just you kind of twist it on up for support. Uh, if you guys want to see a video on how I do that for anything I do framed, just uh, leave a comment below. You could always do that if you're interested. And all right, got that all done, tools away, voila. Sit back and admire your new piece of pallet art and maybe even make a couple bucks if you get it sold. These the things go from anywhere from two to <clears throat> 500 plus and that's for mass produced ones. Make yours really unique and probably make some nice money someone who'd appreciate that like comment subscribe if you guys want to see something in particular i think something would be cool um leave it in the comments below and until the next time go make something